So this is the A pillar trim that I've had kicking around for a couple of years now. Um, I got this with the intention of doing a little pillar pod and basically never got around to doing it. I put the gauges in the roof console instead and it's just sat there. So the idea is the gauges are about 51, 52 millimetres. So if I can find a bit of tube or a spray, um, a spray can cap or anything, the right size, I can hot glue it onto here at the right angle after I've trimmed it up. Um, run a hole saw through the middle of it and chisel the back out. And then if we're happy with how the gauges go in there and whatever, I can get a bit of uh, P40 fiberglass filler and go around the outside and try and blend it in and sculpt it a little bit. Um, it's it's polypropylene, polypropylene, reinforced with something because it's T20. That's that PP T20. Um, polypropylene is a low surface energy plastic, so it's hard to glue stuff to and it's hard to stick stuff to because of the surface of it. Um, but seeing as it's only a pillar pod, it should hold. You know, if we key it up properly, um, it should hold on there. All right. So that's the idea of that. Um, I'll be sure to do another video once I've started it. This is just a bit of a primer. So, at the end of all the mucking around, I've found this, which is the perfect size for one of these. Doing it one-handed, so bear with me. And it's just like a snug fit. It's just real snug. So what I'm going to do, what I've done, I need to do a couple more layers. Is uh, get some greaseproof paper, wrap it around the gauge a couple times, and then heat this up with a heat gun, and then smush that in there. And then when we take it out, that'll be just like half a mil bigger than what we need. Um, also, a lynx can is the right size once you cut it open. But it doesn't seem to be enough meat there behind it, if you know what I mean. It's quite thin. So, our pepper pot has now turned into this. So it's not far off the final angle. That mark goes on there, like that. Um, and I just need to trim it so it sits on the cusp of the A-pillar a bit better. And then we get the hot glue, the heat gun, and try and blend it in before I slap some fiberglass over it. Right. So we've got the pepper pot thingy, whatever you want to call it, it's just a black pepper container from Tesco. Uh, I've trimmed it up, it fits pretty good on the top side and around the front but the bottom side's got a bit of a gap so we could grind a bit more away and fit it up further. Um, but I've just hot glued it on, just tacked it on and from where I'm sitting, if I point the camera the same as my eye level, as you can see, it's pretty close. It's you know, it's quite good. This is it so far. I've trimmed it up a little bit more and hot glued it, um, and I've cut a little bit of this in a D-shaped hole just to clear the back of the gauge a bit more. We do have enough space, but you never know. You might want to put a different gauge in there. So I've made a bit of room behind the back of it. Um, and I've chopped this. This was sort of coming down a bit more, so I've chopped it and I'm going to lay some fiberglass up to that hole. And I've just drilled that hole to provide a bit more of a key um, to when we put that on. I've scuffed it up, but like I said, that's not going to stick as good as it would on normal bodywork. So we'll give it every chance we can. Yeah, I'm going to go hit it with some uh, P40 now. Okay, so we've got a bit of a makeshift workbench going on and. I've done the first coat with the P40. It's a bit rough and ready, um, so I've knocked the high spots off and then given this last bit a bit more of a bevel on it, um, I've ground through some of the fiberglass and I'm going to re fiberglass over the top and do it again and again until I'm happy with the shape. So we've been at it with the P40 fiberglass filler and this is the third coat now. It's not looking too bad, it's a smidge lumpy, but um, the P38 will take care of that. So yeah, it's not looking too bad, just got to wait for this layer to dry and see if we need to add any more 
and then I'll go over it with the filler and do a hell of a lot of sanding and uh, obviously flush that off square again right so this has had two skims of body filler now and a sand down and I'm happy with the shape all it needs is like these little pits and there's a couple of pits up here they just need like one little skim of filler with your fingernail or something the uh, A pillar is dry so that's a bit of bed liner and then some primer blended in with the rest of the grey it kind of blends in alright it's the best I can do what I've got in the shed I can always take it off and repaint it so yeah everything but the A pillar pod I'm happy with um, I had a bit of bed liner left over so I'd done it with that and kind of faded it in it don't look too bad we can always repaint it if we're not happy with it um, and I've already ran three wires just down there you can see so um, that's pretty easy you just take the A-pillar off and you can dangle them right behind the dash so I'll leave those out and I'll just pop the camera down and I'll try and fit it um, if I can lean the camera or something How's that? There's a little location peg up here, near the uh, visor, there we go, and just pull the door seal off, make it a bit easier. <sighs> Almost forgot. Beyond there as well. And I think, I don't know, we might get away with rooting those wires below. There we go. There we go. I'm fairly happy with that. I'm going to go grab a gauge and slide it in there. Um, there's a bit of overspray on there, but that should still slide in. And then we shall wire positive and ground and then signal wire to my loom that goes into the engine bay here that's a temp so that's going to the temp sender in the engine bay we'll put it on that terminal block and on the ground terminal block and on the ignition live terminal block here and we should be sorted and then I'll tidy up the rest of this wiring because I'm in in the middle of doing some other stuff as well so here's a little joke for you this is the factory loom, this one on the right hand side and this is the one I've made <laughs> through the week um, I dread to think how many cores is in there, I think there's 11 and there's obviously like 20 odd in here but they're thinner wires so that's the joke of it all, I've got to fit both of those in the seal strip that was originally just for this so I was just about to put the gauge in the cluster and I remembered that the backlight in it had gone and as standard, where did I put it? Uh, it's gone, it's probably in the bin. Anyway, as standard, they've got to like 
a 5mm Superbite LED in them. So what I've just done is I've unsoldered it from the board and put one of these, but it's green, it's a little 3mm green LED. And I'm also going to put another 100 ohm resistor in the line to drop it a bit more because I think the reason the original LED burnt out was because there was too much current going through it. Um, if you work it out, it should be around about 1k to drop it from 14.5 to 2 volts. Um, but they've got a 600 and something in there, which is a bit much really. It's a bit much, as in it's too small, so it's letting more current go through the LED. So we'll put another 100 ohms going into there to dim it down a bit and I'll put it back in that grommet and we'll jam it in the back of the gauge. So I've just switched to the head cam mount so you can see what I'm doing a bit better. I've soldered that to the board, I put a 100 ohm resistor on the back end of it and then a bit of heat shrink and then I've hot glued it around that grommet just to give it a bit more support because the whole thing is a bit flimsy and it's going to be jingling about so that's what we've got. I'll just give it a quick test on here on my leads there we go a nice subtle green LED so that will go in here in the back there we go and now we've got green backlights for the gauges I don't know if you can see that so the rest of the dash and everything is green so that goes with the colour scheme of the truck and it's a bit more friendly at night, you know. When I had that on, I was coming back from Worcestershire, that's like blinding me on the motorway in the middle of the night. So that'd be a lot better. So I'll run and uh, smash that in the truck. I've got to crimp, crimp some little ring terminals um, like that to go onto the back of those connections. And we'll be flying. Yeah, let's see if that's level. That looked quite good there. Oh, she's a tight fit. This gauge is a little bit bigger than the other one. Holy fuck. Well, that's a bit of crap. I might have to get some sandpaper on that one. And just fluff that up a bit. Because that other one weren't as, weren't as uh, tight as that. I didn't want to use this one when I was buggering about sanding and body filling and um, cake it up with shit so I used the oil pressure one that I weren't going to bother using because it was in metric, it weren't in PSI so that looks like I've got to just take a little bit out of there bugger oh well right I'll see you in a bit right so I've got the ring terminals done up I couldn't film that because there's not enough space to strap a camera to me head and get in the footwell so that's um, tapped onto those terminals. Now when we turn the ignition on, look at that. That's cool. So let's turn that off. So um, I've got a torch here because my interior lights are out at the moment. Another thing I'm working on. I'm not. I'm not too. Um, yeah, I don't look too bad to be honest. I'm quite happy with that. There you go, you can see what it looks like with the, the green LED. So yeah, I reckon that's good. You can see I faded that in because I couldn't get a match so that's just faded in slowly into that. It doesn't look too bad. What I might do eventually is try and get some grey paint that matches and go over it. 